because I'm coming like a pretty princess today. Thank you. Talking chocolate Barbie 2.0. Like, okay, I know y'all see the pink. I know y'all see the pink, the brown, the, the gold tips. The hair is giving. I know it is. So, you know. But... Today, I wanted to do a random episode because I was just thinking about Tyler Perry movies because recently a movie with Kelly Rowland came out called Mia Koopa. And after watching that movie, I was just like, Tyler Perry, it seems to be the same theme over and over again. Like, it's always black women getting in relationships with black men who make significantly less money than them. And then these men abuse them and cheat on them and then end up stealing their money. Like in almost every movie, these men literally take these women's hard earned money. And I'm just like, Tyler, like, do you have any happy stories for black women to watch? Like, we were watching Tyler Perry movies as children. Crockett. And he always has a pattern of giving black women bittersweet happy endings. Like, in the beginning of every movie, he'll show her living a traumatic life. And then he'll make her survive through it throughout the movie. And then her happy ending is just an outcome where she's living a life that's slightly less horrible compared to what she was going through in the beginning. But it's still not good. It's as if he's trying to tell black women, hey, you can have a happy ending, but it won't be a good life. It won't be a horrible life, but it won't be good either. But you should just smile and accept it anyways. Crockett. And when you're watching that as a young black girl, you're just like, damn, this is this is all that's for me. Like the white girls get the happy endings and the princess stories where the prince just comes or the king comes and sweeps them away and gives them a perfect life. And me as a young black girl, I get the stories of black men just abusing us and hurting us and stealing my money. That, 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 that's my story. That's my future. And I, oh. And it low-key brainwashes you to accept that behavior in your real life. Because you have to be honest with yourself. The things that you consume in the media, whether it's entertainment like movies or whether you're watching TikToks or whether you're listening to certain music artists, you're going to be influenced by the things you're watching and consuming. And that could also bleed into your real life. So we're just going to go down a list of his movies because, child, this man, oh, let's just get into it, okay? <laughs> welcome to the Barbie Life 2.0 podcast. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Shakira, a.k.a. Barbie 2.0. And the first movie we're going to get into is Diary of a Mad Black Woman. Now, this movie, child, it was very graphic, Okay. Now, this movie is about a woman named Helen, and she was married to a man named Charles. And they were actually married for 18 years. And he would always come home late, and he was very distant in the marriage towards the end. And he literally abused the hell out of her one night. She came home one night, and she found a bunch of gifts, and she thought that it was for her. Meanwhile, it was for his side chick that he's been fucking this whole time, a non-black woman, by the way, and he literally told her to get out of their house, the same house that they have been living together in for 18 years, and she literally told him, no, I'm not leaving, and he dragged her by her hair and dragged her across the floor out the house and kicked her out and took all her stuff and put it in a truck and just gave her the keys. Like, I'm sorry, but, and let's keep in mind, this woman signed a prenup when she married this man. So she left with absolutely nothing. And I'm just like, Tyler Perry, damn. 
Like, you got to have her get dragged on the floor and leave with no money, nothing. Now she got to go live with her family. And she was in the car with this man and he was honestly rude to her. Like she was rude to him too, but it was clear that she was frustrated because she just got kicked out of her house. And he was saying stuff like, oh, well, I understand why your husband kicked you out. You're unbearable. And it's like, what? And Tyler Perry has this pattern of making black women look like they're angry when deep down they just went through something traumatic and all they're doing is reacting. But the propaganda in his movie always makes it seem like they're going insane or they're going crazy. So they made it seem like she was going insane when she was screaming in the car. And it's like, no, like her husband literally just kicked her out of the house that she's been living in for 18 years and she left with nothing. And he dragged her on the floor and you witnessed all of it and you want to tell her, oh, I know why your husband left you. Like, you want to kick her down while she's already down? Like, and then at the end of the movie, they end up getting together. And it's supposed to be some happy ending. And it's like, ugh, she's still left with nothing in the marriage. And this new man that she married, yeah, he was cool. But he was a truck driver, so he couldn't really do that much for her. And she had to go out and work a job. Like... That doesn't sound like a happy ending to me. But this is what I say about those bittersweet happy endings. Whole have these black women go through something super traumatic and horrible. Then make a story about how they're strong enough to survive it. And then they just get an okay tolerable life. Like at best they just get a man who is nice to them but goes 50-50. Just saying. Like it's a bittersweet ending. Yeah you're not getting abused and you're not getting cheated on but you know you're getting married to a man who has a small dick and goes 50 50 with you it's like damn tyler like this is all you see for black women like we can't get at least one extravagant happy ending or happy story like jesus but let's move on to the next movie okay <laughs> The next movie I want to talk about is The Family That Prays. And the reason I want to talk about this is because I have an unpopular opinion about this movie. But let's, let's just get into it, okay? So this movie is about a woman named Angela. And she's married to a man named Chris. Now, Chris is a construction worker and she's a lawyer. So she makes a lot more money than him. And they do have a kid together and they live together as well. Now, they tried to paint Andrea as the bad guy because while she was married to Chris, she was also sleeping with her boss, who happens to be a white man named William. Now, the crazy tea about this is William actually has a white wife named Jillian, and they have a child together. So William was cheating on his wife with Andrea, and Andrea was cheating on her husband with William. But I'm not going to lie, William was definitely providing, like, she had an account with over $300,000 in it that he just gave her, and he would take her on expensive trips and expensive hotels, so she was having fun with him. And my unpopular opinion about the movie was, they made Andrea seem like she was the bad guy, but in my opinion, I understood where she was coming from because her husband was lazy. He was lazy, okay? He would always talk about, oh, I have ideas. I, I want to go start this business. I want to start this business. And then he would never go through with it or he would try it and it would absolutely fail and he would never have any plan. And I know we've all dealt with a man like that, okay? I know we've all dealt with a man who would always talk about, Oh, I got an idea to start this business or I'm an entrepreneur. I want to do this or I'm going to get this job. And it's just all talk and no action. And then they're not bringing in any money and they're just using all of yours. And it feels horrible and you do end up stepping into your masculinity and you hate it. So even though her cheating on her husband was wrong, I did understand why she did it. And they did make her seem like she was the bad guy. And... Chris ended up abusing her in the movie and s literally slapped her in the face and took all of the money that was in her bank account. 
he took all three hundred thousand dollars from her and that was her money her hard-earned money and he took that to start his own trucking business or some shit and it's like damn okay she was wrong for cheating but she didn't deserve to get her money taken away by her husband and get slapped in the face and this is what I'm saying. Tyler Perry has this pattern of making black women go through struggle. And then when they react, they may not react in the best way. But when they do react, he gives them a horrible, horrible, traumatic experience. And then makes them the villain and the bad guy. Like, in my opinion, I don't think Andrea was the villain. Her husband was worse for taking her money and slapping her in the face. Like, I get that she was cheating on him, but sir, you he was always taking her money and starting businesses that would fail, literally. Her hard-earned money. Like, imagine you're a lawyer and you're going out working more than 40 hours a week, bringing in money for yourself and your husband and your child, and your husband is taking lump sums of money so he can start businesses, and then it fails, and then he not only loses the money that he took, but he also owes more money. And he's taking it straight out of your bank account from your hard-earned money. And he has the right to because you guys are married. That's horrible. So it's like, I understand why she didn't have respect for him. And one thing I learned about this movie is to never date a man that, well, one thing I learned about a lot of Tyler Perry movies, but really this movie taught me this, was never date a man who doesn't make as much money as you because you're never going to actually respect him. You will never, ever, ever respect him. And he will always just see you as a cash grab. And he will always take the first opportunity to use you for money or use you for a come up. Because that's exactly what he did in this movie, so... I was just like, this movie was a mess. And then towards the end of the movie, Andrea asked William to divorce his wife and leave his wife for her. And he didn't leave because he had a prenup with his wife. So if he divorced his wife, he was going to lose literally everything. So he had to stay. So then Andrea ended up lonely with no one. And it was kind of crazy because the whole entire movie, everybody kept telling her that he wasn't going to leave his wife, but she kept believing it. She was like, oh no, he's going to leave. We're in love. And I do genuinely believe that they were in love, but that prenup, baby, that prenup, you see, when you go into marriages, you got to be smart, baby. If you a woman, you better get that prenup and that prenup better say, shit, if, if this nigga want to cheat on me he want to divorce me humiliate me cool but i'm getting half of everything or i'm getting all of everything you better you better that that's that's one lesson i give to black women or women out in general because if you living with a man and y'all are married and he's providing for everything and you don't have a job and you're just at home cooking and cleaning yeah no if you're doing everything you're supposed to be doing as a wife and you're not cheating and the marriage ends up going horrible because he has an affair. That's his fault. So, he, yeah, you deserve half for all of everything, period. <laughs> Cocky. But, yeah, back to my point. So, Andrea ended up lonely because he wouldn't leave his wife. She got slapped in the face and she lost $300,000. So, so, you know, that was a horrible ending for a black woman. And it was just like, damn, Tyler Perry. <sighs> Tell us how you really feel, cause child. And it was like he made it seem like she deserved to get slapped in the face and she deserved to have her money taken. And he made it a happy ending for her husband, Chris, because he got a business started up with her money and it ended up being successful. And I'm just like, no, he's a bad guy. Like, why are we making him the good guy in this movie? But that just shows you how much Tyler Perry hates black women. Like, he's going to make us struggle and then also paint us as the bad guy. Like, but let's get into the next movie. So the next movie I want to talk about is Why Did I Get Married and Why Did I Get Married Too? Now, I actually do like these movies because he did a good job of displaying wrongdoings on men and women. So I'll give him that for this movie. But there were still some moments in this movie where I was like, oh, hell no. 
We're, we're running back into the same theme where black women are with men who are abusing them or treating them like shit and then taking their money. Like, damn. So first, I want to start out with Sheila. Now, Sheila is a very beautiful woman. And can I just say this? I really do hate how society is super hard on big women. I feel like your size does not determine how beautiful you are. And I feel like there are some big women out here who are stepping on people's necks and look real fucking good, okay? Like, you don't have to be skinny or you don't have to have a BBL to be considered beautiful, okay? I've seen a lot of big women who have beautiful bodies and beautiful curves and beautiful faces. So, yeah. But anyways, let's get into Sheila. I mean, he had Sheila in a marriage with a man named Mike. And that man literally cheated on her and embarrassed her to the max. Okay? They literally went on a couple's retreat. And he brought his side chick there. And Sheila got kicked off of the plane because she was too big and he let her drive. Well, not even let her. He told her to drive to the trip while he was on the plane with his side chick. And she had to find out on the trip that that man was cheating on her. What that heifer? She was pretty though, but still a heifer. Cause girl, what you doing fucking a married man? And I, oh. Then on top of that, he asked for a divorce in front of everyone and just totally embarrassed her. And then on top of that, in the second movie, we found out that she was getting abused in her first relationship, like to the point where she was bleeding on the floor and had blood stains all over the house. And then they got a divorce and she was very depressed and upset. But then she ended up finding a new man who did love her in this first movie but in the second movie it was a little shaky for me and this is where i say tyler perry has his bittersweet happy endings for black women because when we got to the second movie he couldn't provide for her he didn't have a job for months they moved to atlanta and he was acting like a little ass boy the whole entire movie because he kept blaming sheila for the fact that he couldn't find a job because he claimed that sheila's decision to move to atlanta is the reason why he can't find a job but it was just like boy you're a grown ass man like you agreed to move to atlanta like moving somewhere is a very thought out choice it's not just a quick choice so you thought this out so you should have thought about that before you moved you should have started looking for jobs before you moved. That's what a real, like a hustler would have did. I'm sorry. That's what I would have did. If I was moving to a different state, I already would have started looking for jobs before I moved. Like the fuck, like you just moved, didn't have a job, nothing. And you blaming Sheila. And whole time I'm just like, oh, this is the same bittersweet ending. Like, okay, she's not in an abusive relationship with Mike, but now... She's in a relationship with a man who doesn't abuse her and he calls her pretty sometimes, but he can't provide for her and he projects and acts like a little boy. Crocky. So this is just another pattern of Tyler Perry trying to showcase black women not having a very good ending when it's supposed to be a happy ending. That's what I, that's what I see. I'm sorry. I mean, we would, but... Uh, Let's continue. So another thing I noticed in Why Did I Get Married too was Patricia and Gavin's relationship. Now they were like the staple for black love the whole entire storyline, but towards the end, their divorce got really ugly. And what really struck me was when they were signing their divorce papers and Patricia was like, okay, well, he could have, you know, half of everything that we share together in the marriage you know I'll split it 50 50 and right before they're about to sign he whispers to his lawyer and he's talking about some there's another account and Patricia's like um the account that has the money from my book yeah you're not getting that I wrote that book on my own like that was not a part of our marriage. That was something from my solo career. 
And he's over here like, I'm getting that money. I'm sorry. But what? Like, you, that man had no respect for her in that moment. You're going to just sit here and have enough pride as a man to say that you're going to take this woman's money, even if y'all are divorcing or breaking up. You're that much of a bitch that you got to leave taking your own woman's money. What? Are you okay? You don't got enough on your own? That was just so cringe to me. I remember watching that moment and I was like, oh, like there is no way this is happening. And then it got even worse. It got even worse because when they were back at the house, this man was drunk as hell because he has a drinking problem that he never wanted to fix. And he was all over Patricia just abusing her and like pouring liquor on her, disrespecting her, trying to rape her, like throwing his body on her, like setting. And then on, t oh, oh my God. And you know what he did? He took the last of their baby pictures because their child died and they only had two baby pictures left. And he took them and set them on fire right in front of her and then started pouring liquor all over her. Like he literally took the bottle of liquor and was throwing it at her like this, like she was complete garbage. And I was like, that is so fucking disrespectful. Like, I don't give a fuck if you're divorcing someone, breaking up with someone. Like that was at one point, the mother of your child, like, you gonna throw liquor on her like she's garbage, like s abuse her, like what is wrong with you? And then it gets even worse because then after that, she locked the doors in the house. She changed the locks because she was protecting herself for her safety. That man was crazy. And he came in with his friends and broke in the house. Like he took a plant and threw it through the window, shattered all the glass, came through in the house and tried to get his stuff but she ended up catching him and he was talking to her and he was like well it's over and you should go check the bank because I took the money from your book I'm like this man do y'all know how much money she made from that book she made eight hundred thousand dollars that man took eight hundred thousand dollars out of her bank account. From money that she earned on her own in her solo career when she wrote a book that he had absolutely nothing to do with and he just wanted to do that. So on top of him abusing her, hurting her, throwing liquor on her, disrespecting her, he also took her money. Which is, again, the pattern I keep speaking of. Because in every single one of these movies, all these black women date men that don't make as much money as them. And these men end up taking their money at the end. Or they end up using them throughout the whole storyline. I'm just like, oh, child. I just, I can't. I can't. It, it's like. All he displays is struggle. And why does he want to show that so much to black women? It's as if he wants to normalize it. And it's like, uh, no. But let's get into the next movie. So this next movie I want to talk about is A Fall From Grace. Now, this movie was a lot. I'm not going to lie. This this movie was a lot. Like out of all the Tyler Perry movies, I think this one is very slept on and we didn't talk about it enough because there was a lot that happened. But this movie was about a woman named Grace Waters who was being sentenced to jail for murder. And she had a lawyer named Jasmine. And originally she was going to get a plea and just take life with parole. But then her lawyer was like, okay, I feel like you didn't do this. So just tell me what happened. So 
Then the movie just goes on to Grace telling the story of how she got in a jail cell pretty much. So she starts telling the story and she basically dated this man named Shannon and he wooed her over and she fell in love. Now keep in mind, this man is significantly way younger than her, okay? Like she's like grandma years and he's like not that much older than me, like probably like late 20s, okay? Okay. But she always talked about how she was a lonely woman and she never had nobody. So she felt so good having his attention. And that's why it was easy for her to get fooled and played. So we later found out in the movie that Shannon, the man that Grace was so in love with, actually was a scammer. And he literally just married her so he could take her social security money and not even that, okay? This man took out $375,000 out of a bank account at her job and got her fired. He literally took all her information, all her passwords, hacked it into it and took the money. And he was in her face throughout the whole movie acting as if he was in love with her and he didn't know what was going on until she finally addressed it to him. And when she did, that's when he finally told the truth. And then he went AWOL and just started disrespecting her in her face. Like he literally brought a woman to her house and had that girl in her room while he was fucking her. And when she came in the room, he slammed the door on her and continued to fuck the girl. And at this point, they're married. And I, oh. So this man took all of her money, totally disrespected her in her own house. So she ended up beating him with the bat. And I, oh. And again, this is what I say when it's like Tyler Perry kind of spins it to make these black women look crazy. But it's like mm, she was struggling and being abused and disrespected. I mean, if you married a man and he got you fired and took out damn near four hundred thousand dollars out of a bank account at your job and your job was suing you to pay them back and you didn't have the money and then on top of it he comes in your house that you let him live in and he brings a side chick and has her in your room and he's fucking her and then when you come in the room he slams the door in your face and continues to fuck the girl like that's obvious how would you feel Okay, like, you would go insane. So, uh, this movie was a lot. And turns out that man was actually holding a lot of old women hostage in a basement, stealing their social security like he was just a crazy ass man. And Grace just fell for him and married him after like a few weeks. And I'm just like, Grace, like, and that's another pattern I noticed in Tyler Perry movies. He kind of makes these black women make stupid decisions. Like, it's not their fault that they get into this stuff. But at the same time, they walk right into the trap easily. Like, she married this man literally after a few weeks, barely knowing him, and let him in her house just right away. Like, and... Also was feeding him all of this shit about how she has her own house and she was bragging about her money. And that's one thing you don't do, ladies. Don't 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 go on a date with a man and lead with I'm I'm six. You could say you're successful, but don't don't go too into it. Don't don't talk about I got all this money. I have this much in my bank account. Don't leave with money. Because I promise you, if you leave with money, you're just going to attract scammers and thieves, okay? You're not going to attract a provider. So just don't even lead with that. If if you attract men by 
only displaying what you can do for them financially just don't mm. you you're not setting yourself up for a good life period okay like a man should take joy in being able to provide for you okay like when you go on a date you should let a man tell you about himself and tell you what he could do for you okay but this movie was crazy. Like it, it, it was, it was really crazy, and I was just like, "Lord have mercy, this, this woman, child." But let's get into the next movie. So the next movie I want to talk about is Acrimony. Now this movie, I'm not gonna lie, it was like uh, I had a lot of mixed emotions, but it was crazy. So Acrimony was about a woman named Melinda who ended up marrying a man named Robert. Now, this man, Robert, totally used the fuck out of this woman for many years, okay? When they first got together, her parents or her mother died or something like that, and she ended up getting the house that her parents left her and $350,000, okay? And she ended up telling Robert on their first date and i'm just like okay here you go making stupid decisions already this the this the pattern tyler perry is showing because i'm just like <sighs> lead him with money again but anyways she ends up buying this man a car after falling in love with him and then she catches him cheating on her but she goes back and then he has this damn battery Okay, this fucking battery, all right, that he's been working on for years, okay, like more than 10 years type shit. And this man hadn't got a job, has her working, took all her money because he made her mortgage her house that was already paid off and they couldn't pay it back and he took all $350,000 that she had. Again, like I said, Tyler Perry, common theme. Boyfriends taking money from their girls. But okay. He took everything from this woman. And then he also scammed her family low-key because they had a chance of selling the house as long as they drove trucks. But Robert, her husband ended up going to a meeting to sell his battery ideas and he got offered $800,000 and he didn't take it. And she was very frustrated and ended up divorcing him because of that. And she looked like the bad guy towards the end because towards the end, he ended up closing the deal and getting a lot more money, like way more than 800000 and he gave her $10 million, but she ended up trying to kill him on a boat because she was so frustrated with him because he ended up getting married to a new woman who actually was the side chick the whole entire movie, and he gave her the life that he promised, Melinda. I mean, he always promised her that he was going to have a boat that said the gale on it and have a high rise penthouse. And he gave that all to the side piece. And, you know, Melinda wasn't satisfied with leaving with $10 million after putting in so much years of devotion to him. And she ended up looking like the bad guy, but I understood where her crazy came from. I mean, she stayed with that man for 10 plus years. He took 350,000. Actually, no, she added, added it up in the movie and it was like 1,203 something. It, it, he took a lot of money from her, like a lot, okay? And it's like, yeah, he did pay her back, but she also loved him and she stayed with him all those years because she fell in love with the potential of him. That's what I got from this movie. 
this movie i felt like melinda fell in love with the potential of robert and because robert would always promise her that the battery was gonna make them rich and have them this nice life she kept dreaming of that with him specifically so when he ended up having that life with someone else even though he gave her 10 million dollars to be nice she was still frustrated because she like had the money but not the love of her life like he she made it very clear that that was the love of her life and I mean shit if you you do gotta love a man shit you definitely love a man that much if you about to stay with him 10 plus years while he don't have a job and he keep telling you about how y'all gonna be rich someday because of some fucking battery you definitely gotta love a man if you if you that if you that down bad so you know she really loved him so that movie was crazy and it was just like displaying black women struggling again because of course this woman also had an ex-boyfriend who was way cuter and had money a job she could have been with him he was a good influence but no she had to be with Robert, a man that was going to take her money for 10 plus years. And towards the end of the movie, like, even when she got the 10 million, it was supposed to be nice. But this is that bittersweet ending I'm talking about again. Because it's like, okay, she went through 10 plus years of struggling with this man. Not even going 50-50. She's going 0 to 100. 0 to 150 real quick. Okay, this woman's coming home cooking and cleaning and paying all the bills while this man talking about a damn battery. Like, you feel me? Like, she's really, like, putting her all into this man and stepping into her masculinity and her femininity. And she's totally getting used by this man. But her happy ending is that she gets $10 million to show for it. But she doesn't get to be with the love of her life that she did all of that stuff for. So it's like, is it really a happy ending? And this is what I go back to where I'm just like, Tyler Perry just showcases black women not having terrible lives, but not having good lives either. It's like he's trying to tell black women your happy ending is still not good enough, baby girl. But one thing I will give Tyler Perry is his flowers because I definitely learned a big lesson from this movie specifically. And it was to really never be with a man who is not at a place in life where he wants to be, okay? This story was a little bit different from being with a man who was a total bum because he still had ambition it just wasn't for necessarily money right away. He had ambition for a dream that was not going to bring in money for many years. But because he wasn't in the place where he wanted to be, he constantly projected onto her and he never truly respected her because he never respected himself. And he would go out and cheat on her multiple times because Let's be real, men who are serial cheaters and men who just go out and pass their dick around and fuck a lot, those men don't respect themselves at all. They have no self-love and sometimes BDL. <laughs> just saying, like, and the way he was just like cheating on her and disrespecting her all the time and taking her money, it's like, I've seen this stuff in real life. When a man is not where he wants to be in life and he's dating a woman, he is never going to actually respect her. He's just going to look at her as flush to fuck and a bank account to use. I'm sorry. That's all he's going to see you as. Because when he gets rich, he's going to find the woman that he truly wants to be with. Okay? Some men will date women knowing that that's not their wife, but they'll waste time with you because you're convenient at the moment. And I felt like in this movie, Melinda was convenient for Robert at the moment. She was giving him a place to stay. She was giving him money. She bought him a car. Like, 
he was able to take a huge risk with this business because of her money and using her. So that that's that's what men do when they're not at a place where they want to be. They're they're just going to drain you. They're going to drain you of your emotions, your mental, your money, your pussy. Ugh, it's it's a mess. It's definitely a mess. And it it was very hard to watch that movie. But, you know. Let's get into the next movie. Now, the next movie I want to get into is Mia Koopa. Now, this movie recently came out and a lot of people were talking about it. And my girl Kelly Rowland was in it. Okay, let me hear. Let me be a motivation. Hey, what? Let's go, 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 go. Okay, but anyways. Anyways, Kelly Rowland was in the movie and, you know, she was looking fine as hell. You know I love me some Kelly Rowland, not my favorite Destiny Chad, okay? This dark skin beautiful chocolate woman but anyways let, 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 let's get into the movie so kelly Rowland played a woman named mia harper who was married to a man and she was the breadwinner in the relationship he lost his job and she was bringing in all the income but he was you know the perfect son on his side of his family and he was a mama's boy which is typical in a lot of black families but you know in this movie he had a white mom and you know later on in the movie Mia ends up cheating on her husband with Zaire okay and the whole scene was just crazy she met him at his studio and there was a white girl sucking his dick and Mia Kelly Rowland's character was just watching him and then proceeded to kiss him afterwards and fuck him. Just not caring about STDs or nothing. Just saying fuck it. Yeah. Cheating on her husband. Fucking a man who just got his dick sucked not even two seconds ago. Okay. But, you know, she was representing this man because he was on trial for murder and the evidence was pretty much pointing towards him and then you know she ended up finding out that her husband framed him and it was all a scheme between her husband and the brother and then she found out that Zaire also fucked her sister-in-law so it was just a whole fucking mess this whole movie all I have to say, like, really, I didn't have nothing for this movie because it, it didn't feel like a storyline. It just felt like a porno where he just, like, dumped all his sexual fantasies into one movie and just played it scene by scene. Like, there was not really, like, I don't know. And, you know, it was it was just a mess, honestly. This movie, like, it was just a mess. I don't, I don't, I have no, I, I don't even have anything to say besides it was just a mess. But what I'll say is at the end of the movie, she ended up walking away from her husband free and just went about her business. And, you know, that's that bittersweet ending I'm talking about. Cause it's like, she had to be married to a man who didn't have a job and, provide and step into her masculinity and then find out that he's a psychopath trying to kill her and then have to go through this whole experience and have him die in front of her sorry if I spoiled it but have him die in front of her and then you know she just goes about her life having to be a single woman but hey at least she's not with the psychopath anymore But hey, like what? It's like a bittersweet ending. Like she was still struggling before, but it's not as bad as the beginning of the movie. It's like that. It's like the same theme every time. He has these black women in horrible, horrible situations in their relationships, but then he gives them a happy ending where it's slightly less horrible compared to what they were dealing with in the beginning of the story. But it's still not a good ending you know 
And Tyler Perry, you know, his movies, it's just, I, I think he just loves to see black women struggle. Honestly, I, I think he gets a fucking kick out of it. Okay. Like, I mean, we li- recently saw an interview that he did where he was telling black women that they should settle and stay with black men while they don't have a lot of money. Because if he can love you, then you should just be satisfied. And, you know, everybody was going crazy over that. And I was like, I am not surprised. Do y'all see the movies that he makes? He makes movies displaying black women literally struggling in relationships with black men and getting abused and cheated on and stolen from. And he gives them a happy ending that's just okay. It's not really a happy ending. It's just not it's just slightly less horrible compared to the traumatic situation that they were experiencing before. So he has made it very clear that he don't like black women and he don't think that black women deserve much. Cause it, uh, shit in his movies, he tells y'all all the time. I don't think y'all deserve much. Like the fuck, like y'all, we watch like, come on. So he is just, his whole uh i just hope that when people watch his movies you take lessons of what not to do okay but don't take it as something that's going to influence you in your real life and it's sad that he makes these movies and it's open to the general public and a lot of young people can watch it and it's really sad that a lot of us grew up on these movies and had to undo some brainwashing that a lot of this type of media has ingrained in us and it's really sad that he has built a huge platform off of displaying black women's struggles and black women just getting totally disrespected by black men it's even it's horrible that Tyler Perry in general his whole franchise is just a mess like I mean Medea is Tyler Perry pretty much like Medea is bigger than Tyler Perry and Medea is a walking stereotype for black women so Tyler Perry he just constantly contributes to the destruction of black women's image and he's just a fucking mess and needs to go to therapy but yeah that's all for this video i hope you guys enjoyed i had a lot of fun reviewing these videos with you guys i literally had to re-watch all these movies all weekend just so i could get the details and really remember what happened and child i definitely learned a lot and i hope you guys learned a lot too but I will see you guys very soon. I love you guys so much. And if you're new here, welcome. My name is Shakira, a.k.a. Barbie 2.0. And I talk about colorism, texturism, and featureism and any issues in the black community. So if you like me and my content, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And yeah, I'll see you guys very soon. Love you. Besos.